I have two sons, Carl, 38, and Jacob, 36. Jacob got married when he was 18. He asked me to pay for his wedding, but I refused. My reasons were, he was too young to marry. I disapproved of his fiance. He had been with this girl for only one year, which in my mind is not long enough. He didn't have enough money, so they had to elope. One year later, they had their first child, a boy, and a year after they had their second child, a girl, Jade. They decided they couldn't handle two kids and told us they would give her up for adoption. I was angry at them because I had warned them about it. I told them they were too young to have a kid, let alone two kids, but they didn't listen to me. So finally I convinced him to let me and his mother adopt Jade, and he agreed. We went to another city and Carl came with us as well. For the past 16 years, we were low contact with Jacob. Even though my wife and I adopted Jade, Carl was the one who raised her, and he did an amazing job. Jade considers him her dad now. A year ago, Carl got engaged to his fiance, Maya. Maya is a fantastic woman. They were together for five years before getting engaged. She's like a mom to Jade, and I consider her my daughter. A few weeks ago, we went back to the city where Jacob lives, as Jade, who had a tough time when she found out she was adopted, is doing better now and is ready to meet her aunt and uncle. Carl and Maya are getting married soon. To thank them for raising Jade and being such a fantastic parent to her, I told them I would pay all their wedding expenses. We were at Jacob's home a few days ago, and they asked Carl about his wedding. He told them I was paying for everything, and Jacob and his wife went mad. They told me it's not fair that I'm paying for his wedding when I made them elope. They said I'm showing favoritism. Jacob is not talking to me now. He says he won't speak to me unless I make it up to him. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. What on earth? Why would anybody pay him back for that? Jacob and his wife are entitled idiots who are more focused on what they can get than the fact that they abandoned their child. You were right that they were too young to get married and too young to have children. The outcome speaks for itself. You've technically made it up to Jacob by raising his daughter. Now that your other son is ready to be married, under what normal people would consider favorable and sensible circumstances, I can see why you would support the marriage. Having said that, neither son is entitled to your support in the marriage cost. That is up to you to determine. In this case, I don't see any issues with your decision. The fact that you didn't say, I'll write you a check for the same cost of your brother's wedding if you write me one for the cost of raising your child, shows you are not an idiot. Disagree. Wow, Carl sure seems like a fantastic guy with how much you talk down about your other son. Jacob sure seems immature, what with his 18 years long marriage and ability to see that a life with him and his wife wouldn't be best for his child. This entire story feels like you're talking down about your child. No wonder he doesn't like talking to you. You seem to think that giving up his child was a spur-of-the-moment decision or something. So no, congratulations. You aren't an idiot for giving him money, but you seem like a terrible favorite playing parent. Yes, you are the idiot here. You can't hold the fact that you adopted Jade over their heads forever. They didn't dump her on your doorstep and run off into a life of debauchery. They were young, felt they couldn't offer her a good quality of life, and decided to put her up for adoption. Perhaps they thought they had no support, which can be daunting to people, even at an older age. You're the one that convinced them to let you adopt her. Then you moved to another city and went low contact with your 20-year-old son and his family. You also failed to tell Jade about her birth parents and adoption, which in your own words, caused her to have a very hard time. Did you always like Carl better? Or is it just because he hasn't done anything you disapprove of yet? It's clear who you like better. That's okay. But you can't be mad at Jacob for feeling slighted, particularly after successfully being married for 18 years, after going through some pretty hard times with none of your support. It seems like Jacob wasn't completely devoid of sense when picking a partner. My 23 female, sister 27, got engaged about two years ago. I don't hate her. We were never the closest sisters due to our age difference, but we didn't hate each other. Her fiancé, now husband, is a great man. I really am happy for them. 
So fast forward to the wedding ceremony, when the priest finally said, are there any objections? I stood up and said, I object. Long pause, because this couple is way too cute for each other. I really just said it as a joke. I thought it was something we could all laugh about at the reception, but I could visibly see the color drain off my sister's face when I stood up. After finishing my little joke, I didn't really get any laughs. My sister looked away, pretending that she didn't care, but I knew she probably did. I sat down and the ceremony continued. At the reception, I went to my sister and congratulated her, but she absolutely blew up. She told me my joke wasn't funny and that I ruined her mood, her happiness, and her special day. I was shocked. It literally wasn't even that big of a deal. I was joking, not actually objecting. I argued back with those points and she just walked away from me. This morning, I woke up with tons of notifications from my family members saying that I'm an idiot for doing that. But I think everyone was just overreacting. It was truly just a joke. So am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Way to cause a scene on their big day. How desperate for attention are you? It literally wasn't even that big of a deal. Ah, the narcissist's words since time immemorial. You made her wedding about you. Then you interrupted the solemnity of a wedding service for a bad joke. Minister here, it gets worse. In some places, if someone objects during the ceremony, you're required to stop and investigate, even if it's a joke. Some officiants won't even continue the ceremony that day. OP could have literally derailed the whole wedding. You could have worked the whole objection due to the couple being cute into a speech about the couple in a much sweeter way. But no, you stood in front of everyone and acted like an idiot. You're a grown adult. You're 23. Act like it. You don't do this stupid stuff at a wedding, especially in the middle of the vows. Apologize and give her and her husband space because you didn't mess up majorly. To start this off, I'm going to give you some context as to what she did and why I don't pity her. I, 28 female, have a sister, Caitlin, who was one year older than me. Growing up, we were dirt poor. Our family nailed almost every single Southern hillbilly stereotype on the head. We both did decently, but neither of us had ever considered college. Caitlin graduated high school first and got a full-time job immediately. She began to help with bills, but at some point began thinking about maybe going to school. I was having the same thoughts a year later when I graduated. Well, we hadn't known that when our great-grandma died, she left my dad all she had, which came up to a sum of a couple thousand dollars they decided to save for us. And because Caitlin began talking about maybe going to school, mom began to save her bill money to add to the sum. But unfortunately, it still wasn't a lot. So our parents set us down and explained that they had money for only one of us to go to school and that they would have to think about who to give it to. I was prepared to fight for this chance because I realized this was my chance to better myself. I was ready to do whatever it took, but I didn't need to because Kate had given up. I guess Caitlin realized she wouldn't be picked because I had better grades and was more well-liked because mom told me later that day that she had backed down and said to give it to me. So fast forward, I got my BSN and worked as a travel nurse. I do very well for myself and live two hours away from my hometown. I went to visit my sister because she's pregnant with my nephew and I missed her and brought some gifts. We had lunch and were chatting about what we were up to when she began to complain, whine, that she was tired and asked if I didn't mind if she vented. Before I could answer, she started talking about how she was tired all of the time from her shifts at work and then having to come home to her kids and husband. It sounded a lot like she was regretting her life and after about 20 minutes, it was starting to get on my nerves. However, she would not stop or change the topic. Finally, I lost it and told her that I wasn't here to listen to her complain and that she really shouldn't complain about the life she chose. I told Caitlin that she didn't have to get married or have a low paying job. And if she wanted to better herself, she should have fought harder to go to college instead of giving up before she even tried. It ended in her crying, which I felt horrible about. And then she went home without saying anything else. I tried apologizing for phrasing it that way, 
but not for anything I said because it was true, but she won't accept it. Our parents have been giving me the cold shoulder and I feel lost because they won't listen to my side of why I said what I said. Am I the idiot here? You are the idiot. I guess Caitlin realized she wouldn't be picked because I had better grades and was more well-liked. Or maybe she just loved your little sister and wanted you to have a real chance. But hey, congratulations on doing well in high school and being popular. Or just as likely, OP's parents encouraged Caitlin to give up since Caitlin was the one helping with bills and they didn't want to lose that extra income. Either way, OP is an idiot because she's either so blind that she failed to see that her sister loved her to the point of wanting to give her a chance to make something of herself or didn't realize her parents were selfish and forced Caitlin into a corner. Even without all that, looking down on her sister like she is is still making her an idiot. You can tell which sister was the golden child. And Caitlin contributed to that fund too and never benefited from it. So that was literally Caitlin's money too. I guess OP is so self-centered that she can't even realize that her sister gave up for her to have a better future. Just curious, does OP ever ask why she did that? Or has she ever said thank you for giving her this opportunity? Massive idiot. You clearly stated that your sister got a job immediately and helped with bills. You guys grew up dirt poor, and yet you don't have a single ounce of empathy for her situation? It's not a life she chose. People born into poverty get fewer chances. It's a fact. You got lucky, and it turned you into an entitled idiot, which is pathetic. You were given a chance. She was not. So you have no excuse to have become a worse person, lol. I, 28 female, have been with my boyfriend, Jay, 33, for three years. He has a daughter, Chloe, kindergartner, from a previous relationship with Fiona, 32 female. They were together for years, but broke up when Chloe was a little over one, Fiona's choice. She has been a nightmare ever since, and from what I hear was a nightmare before they even broke up. She's constantly denying him parenting time, demanding money, dropping off Chloe randomly so she can go party, etc., etc. You name it, she's your stereotypical bitter baby mama. He's been trying his hardest to be a 50-50 parent, but she wants her way or the highway. I finally convinced him to get a court order. He was scared of her threats of full custody and what she claimed the courts would do, so he never filed until now. The dilemma now is that he has the option to ask for a paternity test. His family's been asking him to get one forever, but he keeps saying no. Now they're telling me to convince him to do it, since I was the only one who could get him to go to court when his family's been trying for years. I probably could convince him to get one, but I don't think I want him to. She doesn't look like him, and there's a heavy chance she's not his. I'll just say that now. Also, we know Fiona was a cheater. After everything Fiona has put him through, this would crush his soul, and he'd probably lose all rights to Chloe. Chloe is his daughter regardless, and he's been a consistent father in her life since birth. I don't know what good a paternity test will do. Sometimes I look at her and see his mannerisms and see little glimpses that could be him, but we just don't know. I think the test would do more harm than good. We love Chloe. She's my little bonus daughter. And once all this court stuff is over with, we plan to get married and grow our family. I want Chloe to be a part of that. His family thinks I'm being irresponsible and says we will be taking care of some other man's child but my parents think I'm right not to try and convince him. So am I the idiot for not wanting him to get a paternity test? Not the idiot. It's ultimately his choice. The ex or court may suggest one, but at least then any possible fallout will not be linked to you. All you can do is be ready to support him either way, which it sounds like you already do. I'm struggling because it might be in Chloe's best interest to know who her birth father is, you never know if there will be hereditary issues, and with technology the way it is, she may find out when she's 20 that he isn't her bio dad and be a little hurt or even resentful that she wasn't allowed to know her real one. Everyone's the idiot here because it's a bad situation all around with it being so up in the air if she's his. I would wait until after the court proceedings. Get custody. Get your legal rights. 
but then do the test so that you know. What if as she gets older, she starts asking questions? What if her mother starts telling her things like, he's probably not your real dad anyway? It's better to know the truth and be prepared to discuss it with her. There's no emergency here in the sense of not having time to ask for permission to do something. So why in the heck are you considering what the family said? It's not your choice or theirs. It's Jay's. End of story. You're the idiot if you try anything else. My nephew is in fourth grade and asked me to do some math homework with him. I helped him solve the questions and during some small talk, I mentioned to him how, if we were honest, subtraction isn't really a thing and neither is division. I explained to him how subtractions is merely the addition of negative numbers. When he asked me about negative numbers, I explained how each positive number greater than zero had a complementary negative number basically mirrored around zero. So he wanted to know if there's one, then there's negative one. And I said, that's exactly it. And if you look for which number multiplied with itself gives you negative one, then you get I. Then you get all the imaginary numbers. If you just multiply any positive or negative real number with I, you get one. So he found that very interesting and wanted to know what they're used for. I don't know about that, but I do think they're very neat. A few days later, my brother asked me what I had been talking with my nephew about because his teacher had called to complain about him. He had claimed in class that subtraction wasn't real and they should be learning the truth about negative numbers. Then he asked when they'd finally move on to learning about imaginary numbers. My brother says it's my fault that he's causing trouble in the class and claims I'm teaching him the wrong things. Also, he said he had never heard about such a thing as imaginary numbers and doubts they're real. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. He's a kid, and you're presenting whatever you presented to him. I hope no one asks you for help with homework again. You knew what he needed and made it complicated to make yourself seem smart. Now he's in trouble at school. Bravo. Your brother should negatively add you from his life. The kid's in fourth grade, for goodness sake. Did you also tell him Santa and the Tooth Fairy aren't real? Yes, you are the idiot for confusing the kid. He's learning basics, and you're running thought experiments that aren't constructively fostering his learning or growth. Your nephew is at an age where he needs to learn some basics to then get to more complex math concepts. Also, you're being odd about the truth about subtraction, like there's a big conspiracy with negative numbers. You've messed up how he's taught because you think you know better. Yeah, I get the feeling OP is one of those people who needs to tell others how smart they are and give examples to prove that they're smarter than everyone else. Subtraction is real, OP. If you had X amount of days with your nephew and your brother subtracted X amount from that, you'd not see much of your nephew.